Hello guys, today I will show you how you can create this new global leaderboard that is showing the top 30 players or even more in your map. You can simply go to this button and you can interact with it. When you do this you will see that the numbers on the side are changing. Like this. And you also can go back. You can also add the player names on each line and their score. And this system is used in a lot of the top maps and today I will explain to you how you can create this. First of all, create a new project. After the project is created, we're gonna start to create a folder to keep everything organized. I will call this a leaderboard. Inside this leaderboard, we will create a material. Now I'm going to import the assets and you can find those assets inside our Discord server for free. And the link is in the description. After the assets are imported, we will open the material gonna import the three assets like this place them over here this is the leaderboard one two and three uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna place a tree over here at the top then a two and then a one We're also going to set this on masked, like this. And we can click on surface. Now we're going to connect the size of the assets to our end result. We're doing this by adding this one to the opacity mask. We're also going to add an if function, 2.0, like this. Going to add this to the base color, this one over here, this one over here, and the last one over here. Going to add two constants for now, like this. And one of them will be um, one. And one of them will be connected to a cinematic device. But for now, we're going to test this out. So if A is zero and B is one, we are having this function. So you see leaderboard one is activated if those are the same you will see that leaderboard two is activated and if this is greater than one the third one will be activated so actually that's how the system works but i'm also gonna add a threshold of 0.1 and this is to just avoid any bugs. Now we're going to create an, um, a material parameter collection like this. You can open it. You're going to add the first one and call it tab now we're gonna add a cinematic sequence gonna open it gonna add a material parameter collection add tab now we go to 90 frames gonna click on this gonna click this dot and we set this to tr 
3.0 we're also gonna place this to the 90 frames and this cinematic is set to 30 frames per second so the cinematic is three seconds long and if i play this cinematic you see that the parameter is going from zero to three and if it's at 90 frames it stops now we're gonna program the verse code gonna add a new verse file and call it leaderboard manager you're gonna create a normal one you can open it gonna delete all the comments and also the things inside the on begin function then you're gonna block the error in the on begin function for now The leaderboard will have a cinematic device and also two buttons. So we're gonna type add editable cinematic leaderboard. And if you don't know the name of the cinematic device, you can simply find cinematic inside the Fortnite digest. And then you can copy the whole device name. Now we're going to add two buttons, the button previous and the button next. And with these buttons, you will be able to switch between different tabs of the leaderboard. To check the tab you're currently on, I'm going to add a new variable of type float. Uh, and his standard value will be 1.0. Now we will go to the onBegin function. I will play and pause the cinematic. I'm doing this just to activate the cinematic. And now we can set the time of the cinematic later on in the code. Now I'm going to subscribe on the interacted with event from each button. And also if you don't know this, just go to the Fortnite Digest. We're going to do button next dot interact with event dot subscribe. And we're going to subscribe on leaderboard next. We're also going to do this for the previous button. But then we're gonna subscribe on leaderboard previous. You see that those functions aren't defined, so we're gonna define them right now. And we're also gonna pass through an agent. If you're clicking on the button next but your current tab is 3 you will do nothing if your current tab is 2 you will go to the third tab and if your tab is 1 you will go to the second tab to go to the second tab you're gonna add a cinematic now you're gonna set the playback time to 3 seconds. Set the tap variable to 3.0. And now for the first tap, set the cinematic to 2 seconds. We're gonna set the tap variable to 2.0 if you're clicking on one you will go to two if you click on two you will go to three and if you're already at three you will stay on that same tab for the leaderboard previous place the functions in a different order 
First we have the if statement of the tab 1, then we have the if statement of the tab 2, and then the one of tab 3. Also when you are already on tab 1, you will do nothing when clicking on previous. When you are at the tab 2, you will go to the first one. And if you are at tab 3, you will go to the second one. Something like this. To stabilize this code a little bit more, I'm gonna set the playback time of the cinematic to 1.9 instead of 2.0. I need to build the first code. Can drag this in. I need to add a cinematic and I need to add two buttons. set it to everyone and we also set it to force keep state. Now we can add the cinematic over here. We can add the cinematic also in the game manager. Before adding the buttons I'm gonna go to modeling mode and I'm gonna add a rectangle. Like this. I'm gonna rotate it a bit. We're gonna place the leaderboard over here. I'm gonna scale it a bit also. Now we just need to add the material onto this rectangle and change it so it's not stretched anymore. So I'm doing something like this for now okay I will add two buttons and we're gonna place them on the same location as the asset and now set the buttons to invisible Button previous is this one and button next. Okay. Now we need to do one more thing. We just need to go to the material again. We need to change that one to our parameter. Like this. And we need to select a parameter. Now instead of using a constant, this parameter will send his data to this function and this is how the material is connected to the code. You also can see in game how this works. If we are in the first second you will see that we are in the first tab. If we hit the second, second you will see we are in the second tab. And you will see that it's using a threshold. If it's not working for you, increase the threshold or decrease this number. And if we are in the third second, you will see we are in the third tab. So that's, this is how it works. Very simple, but a very useful system. If you are interested in systems like this, you can simply join our Discord server where you find a lot of free systems that you can use in your map. Um, and if you have any questions about this system, you can simply send us a DM. So have a nice day. Bye.